כבל. Nonsense. We just missed it on March 4th from sundown to sundown from March 4th to March, March 5th. We just missed the National Day of Unplugging. As soon as the Valentine's decorations go away, all the stores start putting up their National Day of Unplugging. The National Day of Unplugging is a scheme to get people to agree to unplug from technology, quote unquote, for one day, for one 24-hour period. Um, why? Nobody knows. Strangely, unplugging from technology does not have uh, does not mean not driving well, even though that's technology doesn't mean no turning on lights uh, because that's technology it doesn't mean not ordering uh, Amazon packages well maybe it means not ordering them because you're not looking at any screens but the point is of all the technologies we have why have we had why is screen time the one that's being strangely demonized in all of our media these days even my phone has a screen time thing that keeps popping up even though I don't give a shit about my screen time why? well I'll tell you because there's never been a conclusive study that shows that screen time is at all bad for you in fact there have been some studies that might suggest that certain types of screen time are actually beneficial so why unplug why keep track of your screen time there's no real reason except people just have got it in their head it's like this armchair quarterbacking technology it sound it seems like it's bad to look at screens and it's better to look at flowers but is it let's take a look what do we really know about kids and screens here's an article from the Amer American Psychological Association By the time research on screen time reaches the public, it's often framed in black and white terms. Guide, guidelines setting out strict time limits or news reports with titles like, Our screen's bad for kids. In reality, though, screen time research has been much less than definitive. Uh, let's see. Critics charge that much of the research backing up these, these screen time guidelines is correlational, cross-sectional, or based on self-report. Many studies lump all screen time together in one category. What, what this means is, first of all, there's no real good studies about if screen time is bad, but also, what is screen time? It's like window time you can look through a window at your friend who you're having a conversation with or you can look through a window at a murder it doesn't mean windows are bad if you witness a murder through one there are things you can do with screens that are good or bad and uh, most studies have lumped all screen time together here's a study uh, from 2020 time on screens has little impact on kids social skills all right every boomer sitting on a couch watching TV will tell you that kids who look at their screen too much have terrible social skills. Well, that's bullshit. 
Uh, researchers compared teacher and parent evaluations of children who started kindergarten in 1998 with those who began in 2010. Results showed both groups of kids were rated similarly on interpersonal skills, self-control, and ability to regulate their temper. Uh, some social skills actually went up modestly for children born later. Shocking! This seems to indicate that the kids who were born a little bit later and used screens more have better social skills. So why are we unplugging our screens? Common nonsense. Here's an article called The Truth About Screen Time. Many contend that screen time has contributed to childhood obesity, depression, anxiety, and antisocial unfocused behavior. They say that screen use is robbing this generation of their full potential of childhood. They liken screens to digital heroin. Uh, they, uh, with the ability to turn your your sweet six-year-old into a psychotic junkie. They ask whether screen time is dangerous and how to put brakes on its use. But these pieces have all one common thread behind the, beyond the panicked tone. The very nature of digital screens disrupts the course of uh, childhood brain development. And there is a dearth, that means almost none, research. There's very little research regarding the effects of media use on the brilliant brain. Even with the lack of imperial evidence, the conversation regarding the matter is severely biased. How many times have you heard probably an old grandpa say, put down your phone, stop looking at your screen? It's bullshit. Depending on what you look at, looking at your screen, screen, you might be reading a novel, you might be learning physics, you might be speaking with 50 of your closest friends on Zoom. These are things that are good for you. Learning and social outings. Running through a field of poppies is fine, but if there's nobody else there, you're not being social. You're not reading about physics. You're not learning about things in the world. Just looking at flowers. There's nothing wrong with looking at flowers. But stop telling me it's better than looking at my damn phone. It's common nonsense. Here's a thing from uh, Colorado.edu uh, 2021. Do screens really hurt kids? Not much, and they may have some benefits. Shocking! School age children who spend time in front of screens are only slightly more likely to have. Uh, attention disorders, disturbed sleep, or low, lower grades, and are no more likely to suffer from depression. Finds one of the largest studies to date. They found that screen time is not inherently harmful to our youth. Here's something. Socioeconomic status had 2.5 times greater impact on behavioral outcomes. What does that mean? What are we ignoring when we listen to common nonsense telling us to put down our screen? We're ignoring the problem of poverty. Poverty has a much greater impact on how young people develop and their social skills and learning skills. It is way more important than fucking unplugging your, your phone. Screen time accounted for only about 2% of the variation between kids and the outcome, okay? It's not about screens. Uh, while the study did find associations between screen time and some mental health and psychological problems, this does not mean it caused them. 
What does that mean? That means that kids that are maybe a little more problematic, kids that are born with the ADHD, kids who have more energy, kids who perhaps have a harder time focusing might be given more screen time to help calm them down. They might be drawn to more screen time. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It takes all types. There's no evidence that taking away screens or even limiting screen time is good for your kids. Research has found that video games played with others can foster relationships. While binge watching shows alone can have negative consequences. So it depends what you're doing. If you're just watching TV and eating potato chips, yeah, maybe screens are bad. At least it's not helping much. Watching some TV is fine. Playing video games is social watching TV with friends is even a social activity that has positive outcomes here's uh, association between screen time and children's performance and developmental screen screening okay caveat there is a small association with uh Screen time in children aged 24 and thir to 36 months with poor performance on uh, some developmental milestones at 60 months. Okay, so kids who are two and three years old, maybe they don't understand what screens really are yet. They don't have the skills to use screens to the best of their ability, but still, the development, uh, the poorer performance, the developmental milestones was very minimal, and it's under it's unclear if greater screen time predicts lower performance on developmental screen tests, or if children with poor developmental performance to start with just watch more screens. Is television viewing associated with social isolation? This is from 2006. Viewing violent programs was never negatively related to time spent with friends. More time viewing television with friends was associated with more time engaging in other activities with friends. So again, it's not about the screen. It's about what's on the screen. If you're watching violent programs alone, maybe not so good. If you're watching Simpsons with friends, go for it. Reading is bad for your health. I'm going even further back. Much learning doth make thee mad, cautions Acts of the Apostles. That's from the uh, first century, maybe? Maybe the eighth century. Plato's Phaedrus recounts an Egyptian myth. Writing will implant forgetfulness in their souls, and they will cease to exercise memory because they rely on that which is written. Knowledge may thus wax, but wisdom will wane. Writing, moreover, is a deceiver as the reading habit grows. Love of the real atrophies. What does that sound like? The day of fucking unplugging. This is centuries and centuries ago when much before the technology of screens reading was said to be bad for you novels were said to be evil both having imposed four bad side effects of reading according to uh the 19th century in the 19th century they said if you read fiction it made your mind flabby stories can leave you dissatisfied with reality people are uh, uh novels stoke the emotions and uh, sensational works can numb the soul to tragedy. Okay? The point 
is that this sort of uh, anti-art movement, anti-technology movement, we're, we're, has been around for thousands of years. Basically, baby boomers, since the year zero CE, baby boomers have been saying that whatever new piece of technology or artistic expression the new the young people are using whether it's a a novel or a television set or an iPhone with no evidence they're going to tell you it's te it's bad for you in all cases it depends on what the content is. Finally, here's an open letter from a bunch of scientists. Screen time guidelines need to be built on evidence, not hype. Okay? It's common nonsense that screen time is, is universally bad for you. It says here, Socrates railed against the dangers of writing for fear that it would nurture forgetfulness in the learner's soul because they will not use their memories. That's the same point I was trying to make. This message uh, that many parents will hear is that screens are inherently harmful. This is not supported by solid research and evidence. Furthermore, the concept of screen time itself is simplistic and arguably meaningless. Like looking through a window, you could look, you can see anything through that window, good or bad. It's not the window's fault. The screen is a window to all of the, all of the combined human knowledge of the entire planet and history that we have assembled and put on the internet. Through a screen, you can learn anything that is known by humans you can learn how to build a car from scratch you can learn how physics works you can read a novel you can talk to grandma or you can play grand theft auto these all have different things different pluses and minuses different things they bring to the table Screens can increase your social skills. They can teach you physics. They can also make you bored and fat if you're just watching reruns all day. It's all about the content. So, there's no consistent evidence that more screen time leads to less outdoor play. It says here, so in conclusion, in this open letter that's printed in theguardian.com, we all agree, the undersigned, and I agree with them, that further research is necessary and urge the government and research funding bodies to invest in this so that clear policy and better guidelines for parents can be built on evidence, not hyperbole and opinion signed a bunch of nerds who are really smart and I agree with them and that is common nonsense <laughs>